Okay, I'm going to show you a really cheap and convenient way to rip SACDs. So the output of this process will be an ISO file which contains the image of that disk. And of course you can't mount this ISO file on a PC or a Mac. And the reason for that is it does not comply with the normal file system format. But what you can do is you can feed it into a program called SACD Reaper, which would then produce DSD files so they can be played on, on your deck or your favorite uh, player. Now this here, just to be clear, this is a single layer SACD, which means it's not hybrid. And that means it does not contain a red book CD layer. So this is pure SACD. This is my very first pure SACD. I've got another hybrid in the, in the cabinet, which is also by Dire Straits, but um, it does not have some of the songs that I want. So anyway, this uh, here is a SHM, which stands for super high quality material or something like that. Um, so as we can see here, Super Audio CD, two, point, uh, two channel DSD, as we expect. And you can probably already guess this was um, manufactured in, in Japan. So just a quick background, the way SACDs work is there is um, a decryption key that's encoded using PID modulation. And for that reason, a normal uh, computer C, uh, DVD or Blu-ray drive would not be able to, um, to, to work with the SACD. In fact, if you pop this disk into a normal DVD or Blu-ray uh, drive, it will just fail to detect the disk and it will just think that the tray is empty. Um, so there, there are only two factories in the world that is able to produce the, uh, the disk with this speed modulation uh, system. Uh, one of which is in Japan, which is obviously the one where this one came from and the other is in Salzburg. Um, as you can see, uh, the uh, jewel case is uh, slightly damaged. So that's a bit annoying, but anyway, for many, many years, the only way to rip an SACD was to get hold of a very early version of a Sony PlayStation 3, which had a very old firmware um, before the vulnerability, let's call it vulnerability, was actually patched by the uh, by Sony, I guess. So in the newer versions, it wasn't possible, but in the older versions of the uh, PlayStation 3, um, you could stick a, a USB flash drive into it, stick the, the disc in and you get an ISO file out of, out of it. So I'm going to be doing the same today, but with this very cheap uh, Sony Blu-ray player. Now the one here is, um, this is actually a BDPS 590, but you can also use a BDPS 390 or 490, which are a lot cheaper. Now, so here's what we're going to do. This USB stick contains what we call auto rip. So download auto read and follow the instructions and stick it on a USB drive. Make sure it has enough spare capacity to hold at least a single sided DVD because that will make sure the, uh, the system is able to um, place a copy of all the, uh, the data on the disk onto the USB stick. All right, so I'm gonna turn the power on. So first things first, Turn the, the power on and wait for the system to initialize. Now while that's taking place, I'm just going to point out there are two USB ports here. So there's one in front and one at the back. Now I've only done this once successfully before using the uh, port at the back, but now we're going to try using the one in front. So I'm just waiting for the system to boot up. So these players run uh, Java. Um, and you have to look for a Blu-ray player that uses the uh, I think it's called MediaTek chipset. Um, so there are only a few. So make sure whichever model you buy is from the list that supports this uh, auto rip process. Um, this one you can get, um, for example, the 490 for about 30 pounds on eBay. So it's really, really cheap. No need to look for uh, an exotic PlayStation 3. So now if you notice, I've just taken it out of standby and when it says home, this is when you can... Okay, so I've just stuck the USB stick in the front USB drive and nothing happened. So that tells me that this particular model of Sony Blu-ray 
player does not execute auto script scripts stored on USB drives when we when when the front port is used. So I'm going to use the one on the rear. Now some models do, so don't take this as the ultimate uh, source of truth. So we're just going to give it a few seconds, and the uh, tray should eject on its own. There we go. So what you want to do now is just get your CD ready and put it in there. And I think we have to press the power button rather than... Nope, I did not press that. So, so the thing to do is just to wait a few seconds and the tray closes on its own. Right. Just going to close that to prevent dust from getting in. And now what's going to happen is you're going to see the word load. As you can see, until the disc is fully ripped, after which the tray will eject. So make sure you're nearby if you don't want dust to settle on your disc or get into the uh, the drive. Okay, so the disc just popped out. So I'm just going to remove that. And I think if you do have another disc to rip, you might have to restart the process all over again. I'm not quite sure. Um, yeah, because the tray stays open, I think. Now it says load, the tray is open. Anyway, I just want to mention one last thing, um, one final thing. Oh, yeah, the script is still running, so it's trying to rip another disk. So, Yep, just stick another disk in there, I think, and it will rip it again. Anyway, um, when I first received this, this unit, the um, uh, th th sorry, this process wouldn't work. So I, I've uh, I tried um, hundred and one times with different versions of auto script and auto rip, and, and nothing happened. The um, tray did not eject. Uh, it was as though the player just completely ignored the scripts, and I found out that um, the firmware on the unit was originally um, to too uh too early to to work with auto script so anyway um if you do purchase a sony blu-ray player and neither auto script nor auto rip works um just update the firmware um everyone says that there isn't a firmware a newer firmware version that actually blocks this process so it's completely safe to update to the the latest firmware uh, which is what I did anyway, and um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.